Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to take a look at the Strange New Worlds update for the Infinity Lockbox and the Lobby Store. As always, chapters will be listed down below if you want to skip ahead to discussion about a specific item. The first thing I want to take a look at is some follow-up about the Gorn Hunter Pilot Raider. Now, I did a stats breakdown of this ship yesterday, and I did talk about all of the accessories on it and most of the stats. So if you want to see a bit more of a comprehensive breakdown of the ship itself, I'll have that video linked at the top right and in the description if you want to go watch that after this video. The only things that I did not have when I recorded that video were the defense mobility stats and then the Admiralty card. Um, so for this, it has a whole modifier of 1.2, which is a bit high when you consider that this thing is supposedly like the size of a shuttle. Then it's got a shield mod of 0 0.8, so for, for its defense stats there, it's got decent hull modifier, but its shields are going to be paper thin. And then for mobility, it has a base turn rate of 20, impulse modifier of 0 0.19, and an inertia rating of 70. So its mobility stats are, as expected, pretty good. And I guess also I forgot its mastery package. It's got the plus accuracy, plus defense, plus all weapon damage, and then plus crit severity combo. Uh, the, the Raider package there, so that's pretty good all around. And for the Admiralty card here, it's 47 engineering, 29 science, 47 tack, and then the special ability is plus 8 tack an inch per tack ship slotted. And again, this thing does have a bunch of secondary items, like some brand new plasma quad cannons, a really neat experimental weapon, and a really neat uh, console and starship trait. So check out that stats breakdown video if you want to learn more about those items. And if you want to see how this thing looks in a bit more detail, the STO YouTube channel does have a video that they put up showing some visuals of the ship up close. Uh, just keep in mind that when this thing is actually flying, though, it does spin back and forth, which I showed in that stats breakdown video right, at, right near the start. And next up, I want to take a look at all of the new lobby items that we're going to be getting here. Almost all of these are going to cost you 200 lobby per, just like with what we saw in the lower decks updates to the lobby store last year. So... Everything but the ground weapons will be 200 lobby per, which is probably an incentive for some of you to consider the 1500 lobby from the event campaign if you're still undecided on to what to pick there. So you've got a new space trait, a new console, a couple of ground weapons, a new ground kit, um, a new melee weapon on ground that also works like a rifle, and then a uniform. So the three ground weapons should cost 50 lobby per, and then again, everything else will cost 200. So let's take a look now at each of these items in a bit more detail. The first one here is the Pike Maneuver. When this trade is slotted, when deploying mines, the Pike Maneuver will grant a damage buff to subsequent mine activations, and will bestow a short burst of speed and maneuvering to help you escape out of range. Now, I don't see this trait as being very relevant for most of you, to be honest. Most players do not have mines on their builds. It's typically more of a torp build thing. And the unfortunate thing for Cryptic right now is that the torp meta has shifted away from mine heavy builds. Between the Maelstrom and the Eagle now being a thing, the Eagle has taken over most of the Torp records on the ISC table, and that ship only has one aft weapon, so that's a single mine. So this trait, you know, would be interesting for the more classical Torp boats that have like three or four mines aft, but given how the current meta is trending, I don't think that even most torp boats would probably care to slot this right now. So this is a trait that definitely has been released at a very bad time for that playstyle. And overall, given that it's a mine boost, you know, this isn't really relevant to the, the majority of you out there. Next up, we have a brand new universal console 
called the Charged Positron Matrix Bomb. This bomb will detonate to create a diversion that will taunt enemy ships. After a short duration, once the enemies have moved closer to it, the bomb will trigger a, set, a second detonation, and that will draw enemies towards the center of the explosion. So it looks interesting for, for like an AoE environment, but the big concern that I have here is that they don't list any passives in this description, which, you know, given the cost of these lobby items, like this is probably going to be a 200 lobby console. 200 lobby for reference is almost $40 worth of keys to get, because on average, you're getting like 5.4 lobby per lockbox when you're opening in a large quantity. So, you know, this is really expensive and for it to not even have passives, at least there's none listed here, you know, that that's a bit concerning. And like the space trait here, I think both of these new space items are probably just not going to be relevant for the majority of you. Moving over to the ground side of things, we have some brand new phaser pistols coming into the game here. These are the 2259 phaser pistols, as you can see on screen here. So there's two different versions that they're putting in. One is just a phaser pistol, and this has a secondary fire mode that shoots a net of bolts that damage several enemies in front of you. Each shot has an increasing chance to stun targets. And then the other pistol they have here is the phaser compression pistol. And this has a secondary firing mode that hits a single target with a high damage bolt of energy and has a 50% chance to stun targets on top of the normal phaser ground weapon stun chance. So really, I think the, the big appeal to these is going to be the visuals, as you see here. I imagine there's going to be, you know, plenty of you that are just happy to pick these up for the visuals. And... Again, the cost of these is most likely going to be 50 lobby per, so right around 10 bucks. And unfortunately, these are character bound um, items, so that's that's 10 bucks per character you want these on. Next up, we have the 2259 tricorder kit. This is a full kit frame. Um, so this has an active ability on it, which will increase the kit performance of the next kit module used. As always, we're going to have to wait and see what the performance looks like. But in the past, they have put some kits into the, the Lobby store and they were quite expensive. So expect this one to, to cost 200 Lobby, just like the T88 from the Lower Decks stuff did about a year or two ago. So a bit, bit pricey for sure for, for a kit there. Next up, we have the Majolan Staff. Now, the Majolan, for those of you uh, not familiar with them, the episode that they were shown in was Season 1, Episode 6 of Strange New Worlds. Definitely check that out if you're wanting to learn more about them. But you get the, the staff here, and this was used by the guard who protected the first servant. Functions as both a ranged energy weapon and a melee staff. The primary fire will deal polar on damage, similar to a rifle. The secondary firing mode will deal a large concussive blast that deals damage and knocks back affected foes, so like a pulse wave. The secondary also exploits exposed targets. And in the melee mode, the staff deals extra polar on damage and exposes targets. Each strike has a chance to knock down targets, and defeating foes with this weapon has a chance to disintegrate them. So I think there's going to be some of you interested in this. I expect it's probably going to cost 50 lobby also, but there have been a few things in the past that ended up being a bit more expensive. So uh, my, my guess is it's going to be just 50 lobby, but there there is a chance it could be like 100 or 200 or something like that. So we'll find out tomorrow. And then the last thing we have here is the Magellan Guard uniform. This is... The uniform that was used by the, the guard who were dedicated to protecting the first servant. So if you're a big fan of that aesthetic, you've got their uniform and the, the staff and you can make your character look like one of their guards. And that's pretty much it for this update uh, for, for the new lobby items here. Um, it's not really that 
overall impressive. Um, you know, I think really this is just a lot of ground visual stuff that people are going to be caring about. And even then, it's, you know, it's really expensive for that. The the Magellan staff here might be an interesting ground weapon to mess around with, but I don't think it's going to, you know, change the ground meta as is. The, the ground meta doesn't even typically have that much weapon usage in most of the uh, the record runs right now, so probably not going to change anything there. The kit frame, I don't think is going to change anything given given its cost and the fact that there's already so many good kit frames out there. And both of the space things just look really niche. Like, I, I think this is something that some of you will be, some of you are going to be happy that most of these things don't really look that must have. You know, Lobby is expensive to acquire, and thankfully, this stuff appears to, to be things that you can pretty much just skip over. That's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down below. As always, thank you to channel members and viewers for the continued support. Stay tuned. I will be streaming tomorrow right after the season goes live, and I'll be checking out most of the new content. See you guys around.